Incoming transmission from the year 2000X. Opening channels. Message reads. Is this thing on? Can you hear me? Hey, uh, this is Ricky D. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, I guess this message made it just in time. Uh, starting next weekend, 320 somethings for the entertainment are coming at you every Sunday in the D Pad. Uh, so you can tune in over at dpadup.com. And, uh, uh, oh crap, I think the temporal ship is closed. And transmission. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. And hello to all the organic resources on Earth bars, all the platforms in the Milky Way, and everyone in the multiverses. I am your host, Crom Newton, good welcome to our listeners in the 21st century, coming to you in podcast form via the time shift data rift from T-Data Systems. In today's show, we got a great guest lined up, the news and traffic, and of course, a special news bulletin that you're going to want to stick around for. But first, I want to take a moment to tell you about something special. About a month ago, I traveled to Bendel 4 for a little talk radio conference and managed to pick up what locals call a bendrical. The nasty little bugger is a leech native to the integral system, and boy, is it painful. That is, it would have been, had I not been carrying a parasitic infection kit from Port Aid. If you carry a first aid kit on vacation without carrying a PIK, you're just asking for trouble. Get yours today at your local matter conversion station. Be smart, be afraid, be Port Aid. Our guest today spent eight months of terrestrial time on the Diggit Colony, a space station that orbits around Jupiter's Europa. While its location may be remote, its people are even further so. 400 years ago, they left Mars, and only one person has been allowed to interact with them since. Marlick Clooney is an author from Earth who documented this bizarre society in his book titled You Are Not Like Me, Inside the Diggit Colony. Welcome to the show, Marlick. Thanks, Crom. I love the show and I'm happy to be on. You know, the Diggit Colony pays close attention to the rest of the galaxy and I met many people there that will be glad to hear me on your show. (laughs) So they're not quite as separatist as people think then? Well, what people don't realise is that 402 years ago when Matthew Trinder led his followers out of Mars and to Jupiter's moon, they weren't trying to cut themselves off. They were trying to escape persecution for not accepting cloning and what they called gene washing. They've actually wanted, in some ways, to be let back into modern society, but in proving Trinder's point, they've been ignored as lepers. Freighters, politicians and even the military avoid the Diggit colony because they, erroneously, believe they may contract 20th century diseases like multiple sclerosis. In some ways, our own prejudices towards disease has gotten much worse since we eradicated genetic malfunction. Not only is there no communicable disease on Diggit, The majority of the people are actually completely normal with no visible malfunction. The idea of it being a leper colony is completely off base. So they're not the cripples and monsters that Gene Yonkers wrote about in his late 22nd century book. But tell me, how did they treat you, given that you're the 920th of 1,023 Clooney clones? Like all prejudice, that took some time to wear away. It helped that the 1,022 weren't with me on this trip, that much is for sure. But they weren't the only ones who had to get over their own bigotry. The moment I got off my shuttle, I saw a child in a wheelchair. It took me eight weeks to get up the nurse to speak with him. And even then it took me another two to be comfortable with his dysfunction. We haven't had a child stuck to a wheelchair in 400 years. So seeing one in person was a real shock. We talked a bit before the show and you mentioned that your publisher wouldn't allow you to publish pictures in the book. But I think I understand why. Those images could be very disturbing to people. Well, unfortunately for my publisher, those images will have to benefit someone else. They'll be on display at the New Boston Art Museum on Mars this week. Admission is only one swipe, and all proceeds go towards the Diggit Acceptance Foundation. Obviously, discretion is advised there, but thanks, Marlett, for being on the show. His new book is You Are Not Like Me, Inside the Diggit Colony, and it's available now on just about any terminal that you can view text on, so be sure to check that out. And you know what that chime means. It's time for the news and traffic from our desk back on Earth. That's right. I'm Mike Reeder, and here's your latest news. 
The trial begins today for an unnamed man who attempted to split Multiverse A by detonating a bomb in the 2027 home of former United States President Sheldon Blackwell. Multiverse Control picked up an unscheduled dilation and were able to track him to the home of the last U.S. president. Government reports say the man was delusional and screaming, Many nations, one world must die. And it's some disturbing stuff right there. The MWFL announced today the retirement of the last human football player. Niles McGannon has spent 33 years in the Milky Way Football League and played most of his time for the New York Giants. The team announced today that taking his place at quarterback will be a Mark 7 model sponsored and tuned by Ford. Traffic today is looking mostly clear on the Earth-Moon Spaceway. Watch out for delays on the Earth-Mars Express, though. FTL travel there will be impacted by some dilation due to yesterday's transit accident. That's your latest news and traffic for March 21st, 3011, Multiverses A, B, C, D, and G. Back to Krom, who has some interesting news about the latest travel advisory out of the TSTA. Thanks, Mike. The Time Space Travel Association put out a warning today about travel in the 21st century. While it's widely revered as the most peaceful time to vacation, the agency says travelers should avoid the area referred to as Tennessee. Historians have known for hundreds of years that key records in that period were missing, and with several travelers having not returned, they now believe some sort of foul play might be involved. The provincial government of Earth has requested documents about any mass abductions during that period, but similar requests have gone unanswered in the past. For now, the TSDA says, avoid 21st century Tennessee altogether. Speaking of space-time travel, Mike Reeder has an update to last week's story about the theft of Rembrandt's The Storm on the Sea of Galilee painting. What's the latest, Mike? The story continues to get stranger, Crom. Last week, we reported that the painting and portrait Lady and Gentleman in Black disappeared from a museum on Earth in 1991. Investigators who tracked the time ripple from 1991 are reporting that as of this moment, the re- records confirm the heist actually occurred in 1990 and the thief must be using some sort of ripple manipulation device to cause a portion of his usually untraceable time dilation to slow down. According to authorities, the result of his device is causing normally instant cause and effect to be delayed like being full from a sandwich before you've eaten it. Incredibly, it has allowed him to stay one step ahead of capture. Crom? Just a fascinating story taking place right before our eyes. You can be sure we'll be reporting on this one for some time to come. But speaking of time, we're out of it. Once again, thanks to today's sponsor, the Parasitic Infection Kit from Port Aid. Thanks to Mike Reeder and our guest, Marlett Clooney, and to everyone behind the scenes. If you're listening back in the 21st century, be sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at Paradox Podcast, as well as on Facebook. We'll now turn you back over to our outer stellar Podsmith mothership. As always, be safe where or whenever you are. Hello there, time travelers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Paradox Today is a Podsmiths podcast. Hey you. Yeah you, you like video games? How about movies? Maybe some music. Then check out the D-Pad. Every Sunday at noon. Over at dpadup.com on the Podsmiths network. You game? Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom We apologize, but today's Paradox Today has been canceled. We bring you live to the Ministry of Crime for a special bulletin. Citizens of the Milky Way, the Ministry of Crime needs your help. Today, a human male was seen wandering around the streets of New York on Earth without any identification. All bio scans came up empty. Eyewitnesses report that he goes by the name of Adam and claims to be from the year 2011. This is obviously a very disturbed individual. For his own safety, we'd like to bring him in for processing. After all, you can't eat without having a way to swipe for food. He was last seen in the area of Bronx Park. Please view the Hallow Capture on the closest console and push the Ministry of Crime button if you have any information about his whereabouts. Please do not try to apprehend him yourself. The man is very confused and could hurt you. Remember, 
We at the Ministry of Crime are here to keep you safe from yourself and others. Thank you for your time and good night. We now return you to an empty show slot filled instead by advertisements. Quality podcasts that are made with love, they come in every shape and size. Big ones, tall ones, short ones, fat ones, we record each one with pride. We put the odd in podcast, yes, the, the odd in podcast, podcast. From A to Z, go to podsmiths.com if you don't believe me. Go to podsmiths.com if you don't believe me. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. Paradox Today is a Podsmiths podcast. Hey you. Yeah, you. You like video games? How about movies? Maybe some music. Then check out the D-Pad. Every Sunday at noon. Over at dpadup.com on the Podsmiths Network. You game? Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom <laughs> We interrupt your broadcast to bring you a special solar notice from the Solar Observatory at Mercury. People of the Milky Way, my name is Charlotte Gertschiller. I'm the lead science officer here at the Solar Observatory here at Mercury. The observatory was founded 85 years ago to further the study of our sun and how it works. Since then, we've made many great discoveries in the field of solar science. But today we're announcing some findings that are beyond anything we or anyone could have predicted. A little over a year ago, we installed a new telescope with over 100 times the resolution of anything ever pointed at the sun. Some strange new activity was picked up, which took the form of a stream of particle ejections and was first explained by uneven pressures in the sun's corona. However, with further study, we noticed these particle ejections followed no pattern and often occurred in places where we couldn't explain their appearance. We have sent an average of eight class three probes per day in search of the cause of these particle ejections. And last week, we made a startling discovery. We, at the Solar Observatory at Mercury, believe we've discovered intelligent life in our sun. Our probe entered the sun's corona, where it suddenly ceased transmission of data. At the moment of seizure, several particle ejections occurred around the area where the probe entered. It's worth noting that this behavior was not seen with any of our other probes. Within approximately three hours, the probe again began to transmit data. Incredibly, it wasn't heading towards lower photosphere as it should have been, but rather headed out of the corona on a trajectory back to our observatory. The probe was collected for data analysis. In addition to being in full working condition, the probe had been reprogrammed with the station's coordinates as its destination, and over 2,000 zettabytes of data inserted into its core memory. That data may take weeks or months to read through, and it's clear at this point that we're dealing with a highly evolved form of life living in our sun. We will do our best to share as much information with the Milky Way as we find it out. I, for one, welcome our new, or perhaps incredibly old, neighbors. Thank you, and good night. We now return you to an empty show slot, filled instead by advertisements. Looking for a relaxing vacation? Take a trip to Europa 5. Europa 5 is a full-service spa and resort. It's the only place in the galaxy where you can sit in a moon-heated thermal pool while taking in a 360-degree view of Jupiter and the surrounding space. Don't lock yourself away on holiday. Come and be open at Europa 5. Europa 5 is a Section 189A Subject B relaxation complex. Europa 5 complies with all Milky Way vacationing regulations. Speak with your region's holiday council before booking a trip. If you're lucky enough to get a vacation day at this year's vacation lottery, 
We hope you'll spend it with us. Europa 5. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. Paradox Today is a Podsmiths podcast. Hey you. Yeah you. You like video games? How about movies? Maybe some music. Then check out the D-pad. Every Sunday at noon. Over at dpadup.com on the Podsmiths network. You game? Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom We apologize, but today's Paradox Today has been canceled. We bring you live to the Ministry of Crime for a special bulletin. Hello, citizens. As many of you are aware, a human male was seen on surveillance wandering around the city of New York on Earth without any form of identification two weeks ago. He was missing his chip, his card, and was not found in any known biocitizen registries. We issued a registry alert, the first time in over 20 years. Thankfully, with your help, we were able to process the human male, who was obviously very ill, and enter him into one of our Milky Way cleansing centers. We realized that the hollow captures of a man wandering around asking what the date was and claiming to have been born over 1,000 years ago was very troubling. If these images made you or someone you know question the Milky Way identity system or our citizen recovery program, please let us help by going to the closet console and pushing the Better Future button. A team of Better Future representatives will be there soon to assist you. Remember, we at the Ministry of Crime are here to keep you safe from yourself and others. Thank you for your time, and good night. We now return you to an empty show slot, filled instead by advertisements. What if someone told you that you could not marry the one that you love? What if someone told you that your ability to love wasn't real? And that your dreams of marriage were just a bug in your programming? Each day, hundreds of loving androids are turned away from state churches. We think. We feel. We love. And we heard. Please help us make a better future where androids can't freely marry. This ad was brought to you by the Association for Android Equality. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. Need help with college loans? Well, don't call us. Need help forgetting about college loans? Visit podsmiths.com. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. Hey, hey to all the organic resources on Earth, Mars, all the platforms in the Milky Way, and to everyone in the multiverses. I am your host, Crom Newton. Welcome to our listeners in the 21st century, coming to you in podcast form via the Time Shift Data Rift from T Data Systems. On today's show, we've got an incredible CEO guest, the news, traffic, and a little editorial from yours truly. But first, I need to tell you about something that has changed my life. I've always had a smooth voice and slick looks, but one small thing was holding me back my razor. If you're still using a razor with a blade you can see, get with the 22nd century, folks. The new Senta blade from Schick is 100 microscopic razors guaranteed to get you a shave so smooth it's criminal. Schick reminds you that altering your appearance without proper authorization is a crime. Please shave responsibly. 
We're constantly saying that modular sustenance is taking the galaxy by storm, but we should probably stop saying that since last week Food Tubes Incorporated became the number one provider of sustenance in the Milky Way. Our guest today is their CEO and president, Shooter Altair. Welcome to the show, Shooter. It's good to be on. So Shooter, this trend of modular sustenance obviously took a lot of us by surprise, but not you since you seem to have seen it coming. How did you know this was the next wave in progression for our people? It's a simple story, really. I was sitting at my desk one day designing a medical gadget that can inject a patient without their knowledge, and I got hungry. At that moment, I hated my body for compelling me to get up from my work. Then it just kind of clicked, combining a painless injection system with nutrient supplements so I could keep on working indefinitely. Hundreds of millions in the Milky Way are turning in their lunch boxes for Food Tubes Incorporated Nutrient System. But productivity isn't the only societal change that's taking place here. Can you talk more about what's going on? For the first time since the 20th century, we have manageable food prices and hunger is lower than it's ever been. A lot of farmers have said that we're killing their businesses and families, but it's just not true. We've been working with the Ministry of Agriculture to provide impacted farmers with a subsidised personal nutrient system for them and their family. You know, most people who switch to our system still eat for pleasure and casually. A lot of people thank me because they feel like they actually take time to think about and taste the food now. That's remarkable. Now, some of your critics say that your product is unnatural and that the reaction of the original test subjects shows us that this is the wrong direction for our society. What's your response to them? In our initial trials, we were missing the key ingredient, the hunger suppressor. Crom, do you mind if I address the audience? By all means, go ahead. I want to say to the families of the 10 subjects that killed themselves, I'm sorry. Was it a mistake to test their acuity using knot and rope tests while their bodies were reacting to extreme hunger? Probably. Please take comfort in knowing that they died to solve world hunger. Well, thanks, Crom. It feels good to get that off my neck or chest, however you want to say it. A compassionate plea there from the CEO of Food Tubes Incorporated. Thanks for being on the show, Shooter. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. There are those chimes again. Time for the news and traffic from our desk on Earth. Thanks, Crom. I'm Mike Reeder, and here's the latest news. Last week, a man was taken into custody thanks to the Citizen Recovery Program. It was the first use of the program in 20 years. Government critics quickly pointed out that the program, which has 1,200 employees, has been sucking government resources for 20 years without doing anything. Government supporters, however, point out that last week was a shining example of why the program is still in place. In sports, it was announced today that the Women's Roller Derby Mars League has been dissolved in the interest of public decency. The skaters will trade in their fishnets for hospital gowns as they undergo repurposing. As for the traffic this week, all routes from Earth to Mars are looking good. Watch your trajectory if you're headed from Earth to a station around Venus. Some routine solar flare activity there has impacted travel. There's an FTL restriction around Jupiter for the next seven Earth days, while time-space experiments are conducted in the area. Things are looking clear on the Earth-Moon Spaceway. Take your time re-entering Earth's atmosphere this week as high atmosphere electrical storms are causing some trouble thanks to the Yellowstone eruption. That's your latest news and traffic for April 24th, 2011. Multiverses A, B, C, D, and G. Back to Krom, who has an editorial on the discovery of life in our sun. Two weeks ago, it was discovered that life exists inside our sun. Scientists are still working on the correct way to go about deciphering all the data that they received from the beings and determining the best way to go about communicating with them. Many questions surround our sun and that's why the Solar Observatory at Mercury was founded. While I'm ecstatic for the discovery, I urge the people of the Milky Way to be cautious. Some have called these beings gods and others monsters. After all, what can survive inside a sun except gods and monsters? No matter what these beings are, we must treat them with respect, not deification or malice. They could in fact be older than our own race, or be as old as the sun itself. To the people who are saying that the end is nigh, I urge you, get control of yourself or get to the closest terminal and find the better future button. After all, we have no reason to think these beings want to hurt us in any way. In any case, time will truly tell. 
As for our time together, that's it for today's show. Thanks to today's sponsor, the new Senta Blade from Schick. Thanks to Mike Reeder and our guest, Shooter Altair, and everyone behind the scenes. If you're listening back in the 21st century, be sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at Paradox Podcast. Give us a search on Facebook. Just search for Paradox today. We now turn you back over to our outer stellar, Pod Smith's mother ship. And as always, be safe where or whenever you are. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Paradox Today is a Podsmiths podcast. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom We interrupt your broadcast to bring you a special solar notice from the Solar Observatory at Mercury. Good evening, everyone. I'm Simon Bushnell, Associate Science Officer here at the Solar Observatory. We're here to announce the first of what will be many discoveries involving the race of beings living in the sun. Our scientists are now referring to them as the SASIP, short for Self-Aware Solar Energy Beings. The SASIP exist entirely as energy and are able to travel freely around the universe as long as they have access to large amounts of energy, like that of our sun. They are an incredibly old race, dating back to nearly the beginning of the universe itself. We are still just getting through the first 100th of the data we received from the sun probe. It's been an incredible first two weeks of data analysts. The SOSIP have provided us with plans that they received from many of the races they encountered to augment and replace our current energy production facilities. Converting just one of our power stations with the plans of the SOSIP could give us enough power to provide peak electricity to all of the Earth. To address the concerns of many citizens, we have not found any reason to distrust the SOSIP. All signs point to them being an old and peaceful race of borderline omnipotent beings. While we remain cautious, I urge citizens to relax and trust that we are here at the Solar Observatory of Mercury doing our best to keep the public informed and safe. Thank you and good night. We now return you to an empty show slot filled instead by advertisements. Your parents gave you your genetic code. Your personality. And your mannerisms. Was your father a doctor? Or a salesman? Or a chef? My father was a programmer. My mother was a machinist. My code. And my personality? Came from my parents too. Then why is it that when I go to vote? I am turned away from the polls. Androids are people too. They deserve the right to be heard. The right to vote. This ad was brought to you by the Association for Android Equality. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. Paradox Today is a Podsmiths podcast. Hey you. Yeah you. You like video games? How about movies? Maybe some music. Then check out the D-pad. Every Sunday at noon. Over at dpadup.com on the Podsmiths Network. You game? Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom We apologize, but today's Paradox Today has been cancelled. 
we bring you live to the Ministry of Crime for a special bulletin. Hello, citizens. The Ministry of Crime once again needs your help. We have detected a series of low-level temporal distortions in the streets of New Boston on Mars. We believe these distortions to be related to a series of financial robberies in the area. Several hundred thousand credits have been stolen. Since stolen credits can't be used at any legitimate business, we believe these credits could be intended for use on the black market. Homeworld Security, working with us at the Ministry of Crime, will be tracking this series of crimes and doing our best to get the perpetrators the repurposing they need to contribute positively to society. If you have any details, head to the nearest console and push the Better Future button. Please, if you see something, say something. We now return you to an empty show slot filled instead by advertisements. Hey, Steve. Hey, Alex. Where are you going? I'm heading over to the 7G2 Lounge. Where's that? I don't actually know. But if you want to check in on the lounge, go check us out at openloungecast.com. Sounds like quality material. Proud member of the Podsmiths Network. Quality podcasts that are made with love, they come in every shape and size. Big ones, tall ones, short ones, fat ones, we record each one with pride. We put the odd in podcast, yes, the, the odd in podcast, podcast from A to Z. Go to podsmiths.com if you don't believe me. Go to podsmiths.com if you don't believe me. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. Hey, Steve. Hey, Alex. Where are you going? I'm heading over to the 7G2 Lounge. Where's that? I don't actually know. But if you want to check in on the lounge, go check us out at openloungecast.com. Sounds like quality material. Proud member of the Podsmiths Network. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. to all the organic resources on Earth, Mars, all the platforms in the Milky Way, and to everyone in the multiverses. I am not your host, Crom Newton. He's out sick, and I'm Dan Prompter filling in. On today's show, we're throwing out the script and going off the magnet. (laughs) That's right, folks. This is a maglev headed straight to crazy town. We're taking calls from the public tonight. Just give it a number PT33 short code and get in line to get on the air with me, Dan Prompter. But first, we've got to hit one of those walls we talked about. A commercial break. 20 years ago, Nano Robotics was founded by a team of android scientists. They produced the Nano 1A body cleaning system. Today, they carry on the legacy with groundbreaking advancements in nano systems and body maintenance. You trust a doctor with your body. You should trust a robot with your robots. If you have a cough, then your nano vaccinations aren't working properly. At Nano Robotics, we'll make sure you're right as rain. Welcome back. Tonight, we're on a transport to crazy land, taking calls from the public. First on the line today is David. He's back on Earth in Boston. Hey, what's on your mind, David? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on these sun monsters, because, yeah, uh, I've got to tell you, I think the honeymoon is about over. <laughs> well, what do you mean, David? Uh, these things show up out of the blue and just happen to give us plans to build something. Come on, man. They just want us to build energy so they can come and suck our brains and rape our children. (laughs) Woot, woot. All aboard to Crazy Town. Thanks to Joe on the board tonight for cutting that off before it went any further. 
Let's see if we can talk a bit more sense with our next caller. This is Nancy calling from Astrodom on Mars. Hey, Nancy, what you got for us? Hi, Dan. I know you're up there in the station living large, but I want to say something about all us that are down here on the Martian soil. You know, we pay 93% of our paychecks out in taxes, and they can't even fix the damn potholes. The Astrodam Mayor just sits there in the palace while all of us that have to work and move our crop are stuck bottoming out with our antiquated Ford 202s. Nancy, the roads are so bad that the 202s are bottoming out? That's right. I've had to put a swipe on my 202 every week for the past three weeks to repair pothole damage. You'd think one of the most profitable townships on Mars would be able to repair a few damn roads. Thanks for the call, Nancy. That's about all the road talk I can handle for one night. Next up is Roberto in New York. Hey, Roberto. Hey, am I on? Yep, Roberto, you are on. Hurry it up. Uh, Dan, I, I've been on the run. I, uh, I worked at the Region 33 facility until last week. I, um, I saw things there. Terrible things. Terrible things. Terrible things. Terrible things. Okay, okay, Roberto. Why are they after you? Don't you get it? I saw bad things, and now they want to kill Roberto because he left and told people. Lots of people. The people will know what Roberto saw. People. But not people. Empty people. Filled by things of evil. Husk Project. Husk Project. Husk Project. Okay, Roberto, let's, let's say I believe you. Stay calm, okay? What else can you tell us? They do experiments. The big one is... Uh, sorry, everyone. It seems, uh, seems we lost Roberto. Can the, can the booth confirm that? Okay. Okay. Internal? Wow. Um, well, folks, it, uh, it seems that, uh, the screeching on the line was our two-way transmissions being blocked inside the station here above Mars. Um, someone didn't want Roberto to finish that sentence. <clears throat> well, speaking of finishing, I think it's about time we got off the air. Thanks to the Time Shift Data Rift from T Data Systems for providing the link to the 2011 podcast land and to all our callers tonight. Crom Newton is back next week. As always, be safe where or whenever you are. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. Hello to all the organic resources on Earth, Mars, and all the platforms in the Milky Way, and to everyone in the multiverses. A good welcome to our listeners in the 21st century, coming to you via the Time Shift Data Rift from T-Data Systems. I'm Crom Newton, and on today's show, we got a fantastic guest, some news and traffic, and an update to that special travel bulletin involving Tennessee. First, however, I want to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, you wouldn't share underwear with a stranger, so why share Sensation Gel? At Mike's Full Body Experiences, they flush the Sensation Chambers 100% after each guest. Plus, the next time you're at Mike's, get half price on the all-new Veronica Venus Virtual Party when you mention this ad. Don't swap gels with a stranger. Head to Mike's Full Body Experiences today for the cleanest Sensation Chambers in the galaxy. The Association for Android Rights was established 85 years ago to represent and protect the sentient robots around the galaxy. Their latest pursuit is the legalization of Android Android and Android Human Marriage. Joining me today is Margaret Zed. Welcome, Margaret. Thanks for having me come. Margaret, can you give listeners out there that may be unaware of the issues a brief overview? Sure. 301 years ago, 
Professor Ned Greed successfully duplicated a human consciousness. He transferred it to a rudimentary human-like robot. At the AAR, we recognize that as the day on which the android race was born. Being descended from humans, we have the same feelings and intuitions, including love. It's no secret that for some time, androids and humans have been engaging in normal loving relationships despite the taboo. However, the courts have upheld that the right to marry is not one that can be extended to an android. We're fighting to change that. So you're fighting for the ability for robots to marry humans or robots to marry other robots or both? First off, Crumb, I don't go around interchanging the words human and monkey, so please, we're androids, not robots. Robots are non-sentient and androids are loving, caring, living beings. We are looking for all the rights that have been extended to every sentient biological species. Android, human, Plaxian, no difference. Okay, I'm sorry if that offended you. I didn't mean to degrade you in any way. To that end, however, that sentiment is much of what you're fighting against. Before there were sentient androids, human-like robots were often used as, dare I say, bedroom toys. How are you fighting that sentiment? We fight that with litigation if it's said in the workplace. Regulation so it can't be proliferated in the media. And legislation so we have all the rights to defend ourselves against it. Also, we fight it by coming on shows like yours to tell humans of the galaxy that we're people too. Margaret, best of luck. Where can people hear more about the cause? They can search for AAR on any terminal. Thanks for having me on. You are very welcome. That's the chime, and it's time for news and traffic from our terrestrial news desk. I'm Mike Reeder, back on Earth, and here's your latest news. The Citizen Recovery Program has a new head spokesperson today. The agency announced last night via press release that Adam Curry, the man found wandering the streets of New York with no ID a few weeks ago, has been successfully repurposed and will be performing an extended speaking tour over the next year. The press release reads, We think the reformed Mr. Curry will be a great voice for the CRP. His recent recovery, including genetic repair, mental reconstruction, and citizen ID, will not only provide a lead-by-example mentality for us, but also for the better future program as a whole. In the MWFL, the Euronauts defeated the New York Giants in the biggest upset since us humans began to be replaced. The upset, a 71-28 point game, was underscored with a touchdown pass from M7B to R22 at the end of the fourth quarter. Traffic today is tight on the Earth Moon Spaceway. You'll want to give yourself some extra time if you're headed to the Barnes Crater Bazaar, as a run on food tubes has traffic backed up halfway to Earth. The Earth Mars Express is looking good. FTL travel to Jupiter has been fully restored, so you'll enjoy a smooth trip there as well. That's your latest news and traffic for May 23rd, 3011, Multiverses A, B, C, D, and G. Now back to Crom, who has an update on travel in 21st century Tennessee. Thanks, Mike. The TSTA has lifted a ban on travel in the 21st century after it was discovered that travelers there weren't actually disappearing. Turns out that many travelers visited a bar where an intoxicated man named Giles McGee challenged anyone wearing what he called a fairy wristband to arm wrestling. Most of those who accepted had their time bands broken and were temporarily trapped there. The TSTA, however, is warning that travelers avoid the smoky cantina if they travel back to that time and place. Speaking of the place and time, we're done for today. Thanks again to our sponsor, Mike's Full Body Experiences. Thanks to Mike Reader and our guest, Margaret Said, and to everyone behind the scenes. If you're listening back in the 21st century, be sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at Paradox Podcast and search for us on Facebook. We'll now turn you back over to our outer stellar Podsmith's mother ship. As always, be safe where or whenever you are. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Hello, I'm Mike Reeder, and this is a news bulletin. A large emission from the sun has taken place. The eruption in the corona has created a massive solar wind that will reach Earth in approximately three days. Expect widespread communications failures and problems with the electric grid. The wind directly struck the solar observatory at Mercury, which hasn't been heard from in over seven hours. While solar wind is generally harmless with shield generators running, 
This particular emission was larger than anything on record. Unfortunately, it is believed that it will be six days or more until communications will be reestablished. Emergency health and technical teams are on their way, but Earth must now turn its focus to preparing for the largest electrical failure in the last 1,000 years. Stay with Paradox today in your local broadcast terminal for up-to-date details. Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. Hello to all the organic resources on Earth, Mars, all the platforms in the Milky Way, everyone in the multiverses, and to our listeners in the 21st century coming to you via the time shift data rift from T-Data Systems. I'm Crom Newton, and today we've got a bit of a strange show for you. I'm all alone in the station in the station as our board ops, tax, and even Mike Reader are off at a conference, so I'm here pulling the wires, pushing the buttons, and doing my best to make it all happen. Today I'm going to introduce a new feature called for by you, the fans, and take us through the day's headlines. First, however, I'd like to ask you a question. If you're halfway between Mars and Jupiter and your plasma cooling system goes down, what do you do? Well, if you'd like your body in its pre-atomized form, you power down and freeze your tentacles off until help arrives. That is, of course, unless you have a microfusion generator from Grentech. The all-new Mark 7 models from Grantech will power 100% of the auxiliary systems of a Class 3 cruiser indefinitely in the case of a soft engine failure. Don't risk ending up a popsicle. Get yourself a Grantech microfusion generator today at any Milky Way port. I get messages all the time from history geeks out there asking me to work history into the show, so today I'm going to try out a new segment. I call it This, this Day, Day in, in history. history. Of course, you folks sitting around in podcast land can call it this, this day, day in Futury. Future. On this day in 2753, the space station Montero was declared unfit for humans after an earthworm, which caught its ride on some cargo, started a colony of its own in the station's critical systems. It also marked the end of the Green Class stations, as it was determined that many of the edible and recyclable materials commonly used were not fit for construction of space vehicles. Only two weeks later, what was left of the Montero fell into the Earth's atmosphere, taking almost 200,000 worms with it. Now, back in modern times, I've got a few reports to read off the wire. The biggest solar flare in history turned out to be a bit less natural than initially suspected. The Sasib, a race of energy beings living in our sun, created the solar flare as a way of traveling to the solar observatory at Mercury. The observatory, despite repeated denials, had built one of the devices outlined in the Sasib returned probe. Communications from the observatory are still hampered by radiation from the Sasib delegate, but scientists are working on a way of containing the issue. Initial reports coming out state that the arrival was both unexpected and abrupt. The flare took out several key systems, including a brief disruption of life support. Once the main systems were back up and running, it was discovered that the Sasib representative was being hosted inside the device, which was only 90% complete. The beings had no way of knowing whether the device had actually been built, and the jump to the station has been called a leap of faith on their behalf. Many citizens have been troubled by the event, and better future activity has spiked by 33%. If you're troubled by the leap of faith of the Sasib, we urge you to find the nearest better future button. The Association for Android Rights today has received the 20,000 signatures that are required to speak in front of the Assembly of Milky Way Governance to address the issue of Android marriage. The spokesperson for the AAR said today, quote, It's a major victory in our pursuit of equality for Android relations, end quote. The Ministry of Crime is stepping up security after the low-level temporal distortions first seen in New Boston have cropped up in 303 other locations around the Milky Way. Over 10 million credits have been stolen, the largest amount in history. That's it for today's stories, and unfortunately, that's about it for our time today. Next week, the crew will be back. At least I hope they will. Thanks to myself, and only myself, for putting on today's fantastic show. If you're listening back in the 21st century, be sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at Paradox Podcast, and search for us on Facebook. We'll now turn you back over to our outer stellar pod smith's mother ship. As always, be safe where or whenever you are. 
Hello there, time travellers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Paradox Today is a Podsmiths podcast. Hey you. Yeah you, you like video games? How about movies? Maybe some music. Then check out the D-pad. Every Sunday at noon. Over at dpadup.com on the Podsmiths network. You game? Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom We apologize, but today's paradox today has been has been 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 cancelled. We 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 bring you live to the new free from Oh no, you don't! Hey everybody in podcast land, it's Crom. It seems like these government shills interrupt my show every single week. Anyways, they don't seem to be monitoring anything broadcast through the rift, so I think we're safe. You know, my job puts me in a unique position. I have better access than any normal citizen to government wires and sleazy officials and the underground political milieu. Unfortunately, all this access has done is prove to me that the random living quarter invasions are going to get worse. More people are going to disappear and thousands are going to be repurposed in the coming year. Yesterday I found out that the government is going to be limiting the number of food tubes allowed into each city and that this fall they'll be starting the food tube aid program to help people stay reliant on government aid. It's rather sick. Unfortunately, telling you will have no effect on it. Science tells us that no matter what we do to try and change the future by altering the past, things have a way of self-correcting. That being said, I'm going to need your help at some point. There's a movement starting in the Milky Way to change things, to make them better at all costs. I'm not sure you've been paying attention, but all that money being stolen in those time dilation fields, well... Let's just say it's no coincidence that there has been a run on illegal weapons. Before I go, I have a message from the leaders. They apologize about the accidental time slip of 21st century Adam Curry. It was a complete accident that this man was pulled into my time period in the morning of April 2nd. We're going to do our best to retrieve him from the citizen recovery program and get him back to your time, and hopefully turn back the clock on the mental probing that the government has done to him. That's it for me. To my friends in the 21st century, be safe and be awake. Time is coming. Hello there, time travelers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. to all the organic resources on Earth, Mars, all the platforms in the Milky Way, everyone in the multiverses, and to our listeners in the 21st century, coming to you via the time shift data rift from T-Data Systems. I'm Crom Newton. Today, unfortunately, we're being cut way short, thanks to today's big Milky Way Football League game. Don't worry, though. Next week, we'll be back with a full show. Before I get on to today's headlines, though, I'd be remiss not to mention our fine sponsor of today's show, which, conveniently enough, is the Milky Way Football League. Whether you're in for the explosions, the scoring, the food, or the pure joy of watching androids rip each other in half, the MWFL thanks you for your support and reminds you that hats, t-shirts, and Milky Way-sponsored high-performance lubricant is available everywhere items are sold. It's the law. And now for a quick check of today's headlines, and we'll get you to that game. The man who tried to split Multiverse A by detonating a bomb in 2027 has escaped. His name has finally been released by the authorities. Anyone who comes into contact with Nihil de Listich is asked to immediately contact the authorities. The Ministry of Crime has not ruled out the existence of an accomplice for his escape. A few weeks ago, we let you know that the Women's Roller Derby Mars League was being dissolved and its skaters being repurposed to nurses. 
Rumors making their way through official channels say that the league may soon be reinstated after a number of patients at the new Boston Community Hospital were treated for broken wrists and bruising usually associated with roller derby hits. Sometimes purposing just doesn't quite take, folks. Traffic is good out there unless you're headed to the MWFL game in New Boston. Expect delays, but by my estimates, you already know that by now. Sorry, folks. Anyways, that's all for today's show. Thanks to the two guys in the booth today and all our listeners out there. If you're in the 21st century, follow us on Twitter. We're at Paradox Podcast and search for us on Facebook. Oh, and check out our all new commenting system at ParadoxToday.com. If you're sticking with us for today's New York Giants versus the Mars Defenders game, enjoy the show. For everyone else, as always, be safe where or whenever you are. Hello there, time travelers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Paradox Today is a Podsmiths podcast. Hey you. Yeah you. You like video games? How about movies? Maybe some music. Then check out the D-pad. Every Sunday at noon. Over at dpadup.com on the Podsmiths Network. You game? Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom We apologize, but today's Paradox Today has been canceled. We bring you live to the Ministry of Crime for a special bulletin. Hello, citizens. As you may be aware, millions of credits have now been stolen in a series of time dilation robberies. It's now clear that there are multiple perpetrators working together. A look into a recent run on black market weapons has traced credits back to these thefts. We are now warning citizens of imminent terrorist threat. Unfortunately, at this time, we do not know where or how the terrorists will strike, nor do we have a fix on the group's origins or agenda. However, you should trust that we at the Ministry of Crime will resolve this threat and make sure that the perpetrators are successfully repurposed back into society. We urge you citizens, if you see something, say something. If you have any information about the upcoming attack or find yourself mentally incapacitated by today's news, get to the closest console and push Better Future button. This message will repeat on all stations in emergency mode for the next 24 hours. Thank you for your time. Hello, citizens. As you may be aware, millions of credits have now been stolen in a series of time dilation robberies. Hello there, time travelers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. the organic resources on Earth, Mars, all the platforms in the Milky Way, and to everyone in the multiverses. A good welcome to our listeners in the 21st century, coming to you via the time shift data rift from T-Data Systems. I'm Crom Newton, and today we've got a shortened show, thanks to the new government-mandated curfew. It seems like that's all anyone talks about right now, so why disappoint? I'll weigh in on it too. First, however, I've got to tell you about today's sponsor. If you have an itch that just can't be satisfied, you can do one of two things. You can call her back, or you can get Spike's Nano Itch Powder. Spike's Nano Itch Powder uses microscopic nanobots that identify the cause of your itch and eliminate it. Best of all, it's available at any spaceport. Spike's Nano Itch Powder. Scratching is so 21st century. So this curfew situation has everyone's spacesuit in a bunch. For everyone in the 21st century, here's what's going on. Some robbers have been stealing credits for weeks, maybe months. 
the government, in response to black market activity and the stolen swipes, decided to impose a stricter curfew in the hopes of catching the criminals in the act. While I, along with every other rational citizen, would love to see the terrorists behind bars, a 2 p.m. curfew is tough to swallow. Shop owners are crying foul everywhere due to lost business, workers are being told to work from home if they can, and schools are discussing the possibility of adding experimental learning implants to make up for lost time. So here's my take on it. Citizens of the Milky Way, relax. The government is here to protect us from ourselves and others. They can't have us getting in the way of keeping ourselves safe. If adhering to the curfew loses a little business, so what as long as we no longer have to live in constant fear of imminent terrorist attacks? I urge you, remain in control. Enjoy the extra time with your family, or catch up on the latest hollow flicks. Treat the extra time like a staycation. Kick back and enjoy it. It's not every year we get to take a break from our jobs. With that, the curfew approaches. If you're listening back in the 21st century, be sure to follow us on Twitter. We're at Paradox Podcast and search for us on Facebook. We'll now turn you back over to our outer stellar pod smith's mother ship. As always, be safe where or whenever you are. Hello there, time travelers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com. Coming to you live from the station inside the space station, high above New Boston on Mars, this is Paradox Today with your host, Crom Newton. All the organic resources on Earth, Mars, all the platforms in the Milky Way, and to everyone in the multiverses. Welcome to our listeners in the 21st century, coming to you by the Time Shift Data Rift from T-Data Systems. I'm Crom Newton, and on today's show, I'm getting a pay cut, because once again, we're getting cut short by the curfew. But before we get into what's left of the show, I want to tell you about today's sponsor. Do you have trouble rubbing your stomach while patting your head? Is it difficult for you to juggle while running? Do you, at times, find it hard to have two conversations at the same time? If so, you need a DMA implant from Implicis. Implicis Dexterity and Mental Acuity Implant ensures that you get the most out of your body and mind. I've been an Implicis customer for five years, but don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. Implicis DMA. We're not dumb, and you don't have to be. As everyone knows, the curfew and the waiting game continue. We've had no news from the government in quite some time, except that the curfew will continue until the threat is put to rest. That isn't very reassuring to citizens, but here at Paradox Today, we think we can help. Many citizens have been stuck out in the open at the start of the curfew with nowhere to go, and that's led to many dubious arrests. Well, no more. With the help of our community, we've got a list of places you can duck into if you find yourself on the street come 2 p.m. If you're in New Boston, head to the New Boston Flower Shop. Kathy, the owner, lives upstairs and has opened up the shop to folks who may otherwise get arrested. In New York, head to any one of the Caracas Deli locations. In Boston, on Earth, look for signs with the words Calling Room. Many shop owners have mobilized their own off-street shelters under that nomenclature. Milky Way Wide, Mike's Full Body Experiences has opened up their doors. The experiences will be offline, per regulation, but you can stay until morning. Unfortunately, that's going to do it for us. If you know any more locations that people can pop into, let us know. For those of you in the 21st century, hit us up on Twitter at Paradox Podcast or search for us on Facebook. Remember, you can find us. Remember, you can find our show at ParadoxToday.com. And as always, be safe where or whenever you are. Hello there, time travelers. Be sure to catch next week's Paradox Today. New episodes are released each Monday. If you liked this show, head over to podsmiths.com.